Yo, Elliot, how would you recommend I handle the following situation? My parents take my children out once a week. However, my parents have bad habits and they're rubbing off on my children. For example, my mother disrespects my father constantly, yelling at him, blaming him for everything, nagging him, complaining. My oldest son has picked up on the habit of complaining and being rude to my father, his grandfather. My wife and I immediately correct him whenever he does so. My father drinks around my children, even though I've recommended that he not do it. I don't drink myself. My family has a history of alcoholism, and I don't want my children to normalize the behavior. I want my children to see their grandparents, but I don't want their bad habits to spill over on my children. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you this, you're not alone. And, I, and I, I've wrestled with very similar situations, right? Sometimes with my parents, right? Like, for example, my mom likes to take the grandkids to McDonald's. I've never fed my kids McDonald's. So sometimes it's with my parents, <laughs> right? And then sometimes it's more than likely, a lot of times it's Colleen's, Colleen's side. And one of the things, particularly when it comes to values, right? Because like my parents' values and my values are similar. They're not the same, but they're similar, right? My mom being a woman, she likes to treat the kids. And, and, and mothers are kind of like this. Even my wife, they want to give the kids junk food as a treat, right? Like, I don't get it, but they feel like they're loving the children when they give them junk food. And so when it comes to, say, for example, McDonald's or junk food with my mother, when my kids go there, I just allow it. And I say, hey, you're with grandma. That's fine. When you come to my house, there ain't going to be none of that, right? And here's why. I don't believe in eating these types of foods. I don't believe in doing these types of things. My mom, that's what she's about. That's fine. But I'm, I don't believe that, right? So I let, the, I let my mother, grand, I let my mother her, their grandmother, spoil them sometimes. And my mom even knows that. And she says, because when we go visit together and the kids are there, my kids are like asking her, to spoil them, right? Like grandma, give me extra ice cream or some shit. Then my mom, because she's respectful and she has the same values as us, will say, well, your parents are here right now. You ask them. So my parent, my, you know, I'm just kind of like giving my mom a shout out. You know, I'm not saying your parents do this, but how it works in my house is if my kids are with my, with the grandparents, my mother will do whatever. My dad will, my dad does all kinds of stuff that my wife doesn't agree with too. Like letting the kids drive in the back of a pickup truck, right? My wife, my wife has such a hissy fit if the kids try to go in the back of the pickup truck, I have a pickup truck too. And I'll ride them around the property. And she kind of like calms down a little bit. My dad will just drive to 7-Eleven with the kids in the back of the pickup truck. And, uh, and it's one of these things where you're with grandpa, right? And so I kind of, and she kind of like lets it go. It's like, okay, you're with grandpa. But when you're with us or even with we're there and grandparents are there, my parents always default to us. They're like, well, when your parents are not here, it's a different story. Your parents are here. You got to defer to them. Do I like that? Is that perfect? No, but I'm telling you how it works with those types of situations. Now, there are family members on Colleen's side. <laughs> I'm going to point it out specifically, but they, this person has completely different values than Colleen and I. Completely different values. We're, we're going right. They're going left. And, what, and, and, and the results show themselves. And I'll, I'm going to relate this back to you in a minute. So this person that has completely different values, when the children see them, right, this grandparent, with the completely different values, and my children question, well, why is it that grandma has this particular, I let the cat out of the bag. Why is it that Nana has this kind of way of thinking and acting and being and doing, but you guys are opposed to it? And you know what? It's very simple. All we got to do is point to the fruits. You shall know him by his fruits. We point to the result. Well, look, Nana doesn't have a very good life. Nana's always sick. Nana has had four different husbands and boyfriends and divorces. And it's not going really well for her. And if you want to have that kind of life, then, you know, then, of course, do what she does. But we're telling you right now, and you can see with your own two eyes, that that's not the right way to go. Now, with your children and your grandparents, you got to say to your child, to your son, look at how much, look at the way they speak to each other. Notice that in my home, in our home, we don't speak to each other that way. And a part of the result of them speaking that way is that my dad is an alcoholic, right? If your wife spoke to you the way your mother speaks to your dad, you might start drinking again, right? And you can explain to your kids, alcoholism is a, is a horrible thing, but it's a result of the way they're living their lives. My parents don't respect each other. And my father comes home every day 
and my mother's nagging him. So you know what he does? He goes to his bottle, right? Is that the right thing to do? Is it, is it what I would do? No, but it's what they're doing and you could see the results of it. And therefore I'm telling you, don't do it that way. Our way is better. I would like to point, there are a lot of things with my kids too that they see the pop culture do because it's grandparents, it's everything. The whole culture, everybody's trying to influence your kids and your kids don't want to be influenced by you. It's just the way it is. And I have my theories as to why it's like that. But anyway, the point is that children are more influenced by the outside or, the, or, or they tend to want to be more influenced by what's going on outside and they don't want to listen to their parents. And when that, those type of situations arise in my home, look, you have, you have to have a good, clean record. Right. So I just point to myself. I say, hey, look, look at me and your mother. Look at our lives. Look at how we act, what we eat, what we think, what, how we behave, the choices we make. We are in good shape. We have a healthy relationship. We're not depressed. We're not unhappy. We get the things that we work hard for in this life. We have a great life. If you want a great life, then you're lucky because you got the perfect example and they're your parents. Now, if you want to have a different kind of life because you want to do what the culture is doing, right? You want to be a fornicator and an adulterer and you want to have multiple divorces and sleep around and be a, a flower power uh, hippie child and think that that's empowering you. Well, then look at the results of people that live that way. Look at your friend's parents. Yeah, I noticed how that lady is with her, your friend's mom. Look at, look at her. Look how she dresses. Look how she acts, look how she talks, but then look, she can't keep a man. She's gone through three divorces. Your friend has her real dad and then two fake dads. Do you want that kind of life, right? Maybe you want that kind of life, then you do what they do. But for me in my home, we do it this way and you see the result. This is where parents living example becomes the most important thing. And, I, you know, I don't want to I don't want to denigrate anybody who's made mistakes. You know, you married the wrong woman and you've had divorces and shit like that. But all that when you do that, then your example becomes what your children fear or what they hanker. Right. I'm to me, I got to I my primary vocation is to be everything that I want my children to be or to be everything that I would expect for my children's husband or my daughter's husband to be my wife for my son, right? Be the living example, be everything that you would expect for them. Does that mean that everything's going to turn out hunky dory? No, but you know, one thing, one thing my dad always says, and that I agree with, and then I'm going to share with you right now, you did everything the best you could, the best, you know, how you spared nothing. So when it, time comes and your kid decides to go left field, you can, justifiably wash your hands. Say, hey, look, I did this for you. I did that for you. I created a good life for you. I did everything the way that I know is the right way for you. But if you choose to live a different way, then my hands are washed. You see the way you and my, my mother, your mother and I behave. And you also see how your grandmother and grandfather behave. Dad's an alcoholic. Grand, grandma's miserable and fighting all the time. Look at your mom and I. We respect each other. We love each other. We talk kindly to each other. I'm not an addict. I'm not addicted to alcohol. And your mother is not a miserable woman. Which one, right? Like you just got to contrast. Do you want A or do you want B, right? Do you want A or do you want B? Which one looks better to you? If they want to be degenerate and live that kind of lifestyle, well, then there's nothing you could do because you, you can't make them, but you can show them, right? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I have a whole lot of situations like that in my home. I had a whole lot of situations in my home where I'm leading these kids to water. I'm like, here's the water. Not only is it water, it's the most pristine, cleanest, bestest water on earth. And I'm, I'm giving it to you. And you know what some of them do? Nah, I'm going to drink that muddy water over there. At first, when I was younger, you know, when I say younger, I mean, like, even just a few years ago, I would be upset. I'd be like, why am I trying so hard to give you this perfect stuff and you're going to go over here with this garbage? But then as I matured and I grew up, and I stopped taking things personally. I say, you know what? I'm leading you to water. The Lord sees I lead you to water. My wife sees you leading to water. My soul knows I lead you to water. You got, I got other children that lead them to water and they're drinking the water. You, you're not drinking the water, you're drinking mud. It's not my fault. Right? And that's a certain point where you got to kind of like wash your hands with your kids. Your kids are still very young and you're still molding them in that way. 
And I think you're doing the right thing by speaking to your son when he picked up that habit of being rude to your father. Right? You did the right thing. And I think if you just keep doing that, you're going to be all right. Just live the example you want for them, but don't just live the example. And I, this is important. A lot of people, they think, oh, but I'm, I live the example. That's one, that's half of it. You got to live the example and you got to speak up about it. I think there are a lot of good parents out there that did everything that they were supposed to do and they were a living example to their children, but they never spoke to them about the hard topics. You got to talk to them about the uncomfortable, you have to have uncomfortable conversations with your kids. You got to talk to them about the things that you don't want to talk to them about. But you also got to be able to back it up with, just check us out, check me out. Look how I live my life. That's because of this belief that is contrary to the popular culture that you're just starting to go down which I'm telling you is not right, do it my way. Cause look at my life, my life is good, right? Anyway, that's just the way I approach it, bro. Uh, I think you're doing the right thing, just keep doing it, bro. Don't let them, you say, I want my children to see their grandparents, but I don't want their bad habits to spill over. Let your children see your grandparents, but let them see it for what they are. I like when my children get to see the grandparent that is making poor choices in her life. Because then I could say, well, do you see how she did that? Do you see what she's doing there? Do you see what's going on in her life? Do you see how things are unfolding for her? Now, do you think that's the right way or not? They can come to their own conclusion. Look at, look at how they're living. Look at how they're doing things. Look at their home and their relationship. Is that good? Do you think that's good? Is that something that you want? No, I don't really want that. Good, then you don't do what that person does, even if it's your grandparent, even if it's your best friend, even if it's your cousin, whatever it is. A lot of people, they come from homes that are like the one that your father's, that you came from, right? You, check this out. You came from that home where your father's drinking every day because their mother's nagging him. So what you do, you chose different because you saw, okay, A plus, uh, uh, two plus two equals four. Nagging wife and alcohol equals bad life. So you know what you did? You ain't got a wife that doesn't nag you. So you don't drink alcohol and you have a better life than your dad, <laughs> right? And then you point it out. When I say speak up, it means you gotta point it out to your kids. You gotta say, hey, look, this is what's happening and this is what's happening and these are the results. You see that? Now look at me. This is what I did, this is what I didn't do and these are the results. And kids are not stupid. You put up the two pictures and you say, which one would you rather? Which one do you think is better? And they're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, that one's a better. Right. And that, at that point, I think you did the best that you could, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.